Broadcasting from Oklahoma, the tornado capital of the world, home of the Oklahoma City Thunder and the University of Oklahoma Sooners. This is the Curated Experience Show, a weekly podcast about the customer experience with viewpoints you will not hear anywhere else. And now your host, author, and customer experience expert, Amos Tanuma. Welcome to the Curated Experience. I am your host, Amos Tanuma. I'm excited to bring this show to you. Um, I've got um, a guest I've been wanting to bring on for quite some time. I've got Gary York on the phone. Gary, are you still with me? Uh, yes, uh, glad to join you today. Uh, thanks for doing this. I have been following you mostly on Twitter for, for many years now. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't had a chance to, uh, to have a conversation. So let me, let me start just by you know, kind of doing uh, an, an intro Tell us a little bit about about what you do, um, you know, you and your team, what, what you guys are doing in the world. Yes, well, thank you for having uh, me today. Um, I love what you're doing and I'm happy to, to have a chance to, to uh, share a little bit with you and your audience and get to know you a little better. Um, I'm a technologist by training. I've, I have my PhD in engineering from uh, Carnegie Mellon. I lived in Boston and Silicon Valley and worked uh, for high tech companies and startups, software startups in those areas. And um, for uh, a number of years ago, my wife and I moved um, to Alabama where I was born to be closer to family. So since I've been in Alabama, I've been a, a serial entrepreneur. So yeah. I've had uh, I've had four previous companies that are in the enterprise software space. And of those companies, we've had some great outcomes with and three private sales and one IPO among those companies. Um, so I, uh, I um, love being a tech entrepreneur. I feel like that I found my calling. I know exactly where I'm supposed to spend my life. <laughs> right. And um, and I um, and a few years ago, uh, a friend of mine who's a neurosurgeon came to me with an idea and said, um, "Hey, I I want you to look at this technology uh, that we've invented. Um, tell me what you think." Well, that was the foundation for Help Lightning, which is the current company I've been with now for the last four years as CEO. So Help Lightning is a new type of, um, of, uh, of augmented reality that allows an expert to be virtually present. So the gold standard for giving and receiving help is for me to be physically present. Right. If you were having a problem and I could teleport to your to your location and help you resolve that problem that would be the best possible path i that's the gold standard but obviously um the teleportation has the risk of of uh, dematerialization <laughs> and uh, so don't want to go that path yet uh so so instead we have virtual interactive presence which is the technology that help lightning um, invented that allows you to to, me to be virtually there i can still show you what to do with gestures and tools um, but but I can do it from a thousand miles away with very low friction. That 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 makes sense, and uh, thank, thanks for that background. So just before we delve even deeper, right? Um, just for lots of folks who are listening who don't pay close attention to this, can you talk a little bit about virtual reality, augmented reality at a at a pretty high level? All the average. So the user sees is this whole reality that's not really physical, right? Can you can you clarify those those terms and, and, and where you guys typically play? Yeah, that's a great question. And I I think some of us are having a hard enough time with, with the real reality right now. So <laughs> right. having you know virtual reality and augmented reality just makes it even more confusing. But um, but virtual reality fundamentally is where you're wearing um, you're you're completely um, uh, occluded. you uh, from from the real reality. Uh, the, okay. the reality that you see and hear is completely um, digital. It's, it's it's artificial. So typically you're wearing a, um, goggles which are, which don't allow you to see the real world. And you're oftentimes you have a headset with which allows you to hear the um, the virtual world, but not the real world. And um, and nowadays, people are even trying to get sensors and even allow motion. So a lot of virtual reality, advanced virtual reality technology even allows you to move around in this virtual space um, and, and, uh, and um, simulate those activities as you, 
with, with a game or with some other virtual activity. Um, augmented reality as, as an alternative to that is really a, a very broad um, uh, uh, technology or idea that is actually, it, it, most people believe, will be much bigger than virtual reality in the long run. And augmented reality is where you, you still have the, the ability to see and hear and interact with the real world, but you're augmented now. You're given, as some people would say, you're given superpowers. So now right. when, I, when I look at this product, I can actually see information, digital information about that product telling me the last time it was maintained or what the pressure on the pipe is or um, what part number it is or how many cal- if you're in the store, how many calories this, you know, this, this uh, device has or or is you know it you know do I is this on my list of things that I need to buy? So augmented reality is can be incredibly broad. Most of us were introduced to augmented reality by Pokemon Go, where right. now we can play a game out in the real world and you know chase characters and catch them and win points and such. Um, and uh, but but augmented reality for for us is really about in the in the business to business world. How can we use this? augmented capability to allow people to run their businesses better, to provide better services, to better support their customers and those kind of things. Um, uh, that, that, that clarifies things even for me and I've done a lot of research in this area. So, so let, me, let, me, let me turn this into the customer experience, which is what um, all of our listeners care about. So if I, if I think about the customer experience, I, I want to get into how this helps. So uh, let's focus on the front end of the experience, you know, the discovery and the sales. And I'll, I'll give you my firsthand experience, right? So on Amazon, on the Amazon app the other day, I was trying to buy a pot, right, for a flower. And I could basically bring the flower pot and place it in different places of my living room, right? Yes. <laughs> like, like, I was like, oh, this is... This is cool. So, so it's like things like that you're talking about. T- talk us a little bit about, for those who are listening to us and they're CX pros who are on the front end of the experience, sales, marketing, discovery, et cetera. Uh, what does that look like? Help us envision what selling of the future might, might be like as you and others like you are making this piece of technology more, more mainstream. Yeah, so there's a lot of potential uses of augmented reality in in the upfront sales and marketing um, areas. Um, many people are using uh, augmented reality to begin to um, promote and sell their products. So exactly as you were describing, I want to, I want, I'm looking for a piece of furniture. I want to see if it's going to fit in my living room, um, or or I'm interested in buying this car. I want to be able to look at it in my own space and kind of look around and look at it from all, all, all different sides and, and, uh, and dimensions. So those certainly are uses of, of, um, of augmented reality for help lightning, uh, with our remote expertise capability, we actually have customers who've been using it in the sales process. Mm. So one of our customers actually produces manufacturing machinery and when, and, and their bidding and selling process is actually fairly complex. So when they need to do site surveys, they need to prepare um, content um, for their bids and proposals that's actually based on the phys- physical space. So if they can do that virtually, they can get all their experts, uh, their best minds, their engineers, um, their um, sales um, technical leaders to be able to see the site, to design the perfect solution for that particular site virtually, and then put a proposal together um, so they can be more responsive and more accurate in the proposal process. So that's one example of how people are using the, these kind of technologies for competitive advantage in the in the in the uh, in the pre-sale process. Wow! And then and then let's let's go on the service end. Uh, this is the one that that frankly I, I think has even <laughs> you know a lot more. A lot more depth and use cases that I suspect the audience will be salivating on. So I, I'm now a customer and I, I have a service need, whether I'm industrial or what have you. Talk about how folks should begin to think about um, how they can capitalize on, on a solution like this to really just either differentiate, save costs, all of those things around the service experience. 
Yeah, service, I think, is where remote expertise really shines. And that's certainly been a, a, the big focus for, for Help Lightning and our customers. Uh, most of our customers started out with thinking about using Help Lightning with their field service teams. They knew that they had an aging workforce. Uh, they had one of our customers told us that 20% of their most senior skilled um, talent are, are leaving every year because they're getting to the age where they don't want to um, get on ladders anymore. They don't want to spend their time on planes or in trucks driving around. And, um, and so this aging workforce means you have to somehow capture that experience. But then beyond capturing the experience, you need, you'd like to be able to share that experience with the less experienced people who you're hiring. Um, we also know in the U.S. that fewer people want to go into the uh, technical services roles that are available. So it's find it harder and harder to find skilled people who, who want to take those jobs. And the people you do hire generally aren't as experienced as you'd like. Because of that, you need to give them more support. So they're going to need that the person with 20 years experience now can virtually support one of these younger, less experienced field technicians to solve a much broader range of problems. One of the biggest issues in field service is first time fix rate. Of course, what that means is that you you don't have to come back a second time when you and you're able to solve the problem uh, for the customer the first time. That's that's a huge measure because if you have to come back a second time, typically that's pure cost for the company. You may get paid to come out and fix it the first time, but if you have to come back a second time, that's purely on your nickel, and that's a you, know, you have a huge incentive to eliminate those costs in order to allow your organization to be more effective and efficient. From a customer perspective, and of course, this is a CX po podcast, the customer is much more satisfied if you can solve the problem the first time. You don't have to come back a day or two later with another part or with a more experienced technician. So it's tremendous value proposition around getting the problem solved the first time. And using virtual presence or remote expertise, you're able to do that much more effectively. Now, the second big use, use case for us is around technical support and technical services. Mm. This is actually, in many ways, a higher value proposition and where many of our customers have, are tremendously excited about the value proposition for Help Lightning because they're able to solve problems for their customers without a truck roll entirely. And so imagine that you have a complex piece of equipment uh, maybe you, you're uh, you're Becton Dickens. You're a customer of Becton Dickinson. Right. You bought this piece of lab equipment for your hospital. Um, now all of a sudden, something is not working the way you expect. Um, you're a lab technician. You're you're not an expert in this piece of equipment, but you call the Becton Dick Dickinson technical support line, and you get somebody on the call. You tell them what's going on, and they say, "Let me have a look." Now all of a sudden, you bring up Help Lightning. Within seconds, that expert, that technical support expert is virtually present with you, talking you through, looking at it, figuring out what's wrong. And in many cases, you can solve the problem without actually dispatching somebody. For one of our healthcare medical device customers, they tell us that 70% of their truck rolls prior to help lightning didn't require a part to resolve the problem. So take that in mind. That means that 70% of the time, potentially, they could have resolved the problem with somebody on site, a, a, a technician who is on site already without actually dispatching. What does that do? That means that you've solved the problem faster, the customer is much more satisfied, and um, of course you've eliminated the cost and downtime associated with that, that piece of equipment being out of, out of service wow. for an extended period. Yeah, see, I, 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 I ran um, service, and which included Phil, for one of the large cable companies, so you start talking about um, avoidable truck rolls, and I, <laughs> like I, I know the drill, and I know the economics of that. And I think what you're pointing to is the holy grail, which we've always looked for, which is this idea that look, the incentives for truck rolls are very nicely aligned, right? Like as you said, the customer doesn't want us there more than once, and it costs us uh, money every time we're going there aimlessly. And if you could. Number one, do it on uh, first first time, uh, time resolve, or even better, avoid it altogether, um, and keep the customer even happier and stickier. My gosh, um, I see why I see why you've gone in head first <laughs> into, into the space. It, it is a, a it's great to hear our customers tell us stories about how they've delighted their customers by doing something that the customer didn't think was possible. So it, it's really exciting to hear them say, 
you know, that was so cool, or I can't believe you were able to do this, or we've got you up at, you know, I, you know, this is so valuable to be able to get up and running now rather than have to wait until tomorrow. So those are, um, those are fantastic stories when you can hear that. Yeah. Uh, talk about, we can't have this conversation without talking about the world we live in now, which is COVID. I don't, I hesitate to call it in the post COVID world, but just the, the reality of the world we're in. And I won't get into, I won't um, ask you to prognosticate of, you know, how much different and all of this things that have happened in the world. But I do want you to talk about how the world we live in now is accelerating I, I'm, I'm guessing accelerating this this trend because what you didn't mention when you talked about these collaborations on the front end or on the back end is I'm just thinking, man, uh, these are folks who don't have to physically be there, and it feels like they all are, right? So how is that? Have you seen any impact related to this world of more sensitivity towards traveling and being face to face? Yeah, absolutely. It's been a huge uh, uptick in business for us. We we've been slammed in terms of new prospects looking for ways to uh, use use remote virtual service tools instead of having to be there personally. But let me tell you a couple of stories. One of our customers is a is a large national telecommunications company. They work in um, coast to coast uh, for providing a cable and internet services. Um, they um, decided when the pandemic hit and when California closed, uh, locked down the, the state and, and closed businesses, uh, they, they decided they were not going to send their field service technicians into the residential customers' homes. Now, that's, that's great in terms of reducing the impact and spread of the virus, but how are you going to still provide service to your customers right. in, in light of that? So, um, so we were talking with them about using Help Lightning um, prior to the pandemic, um, when the pandemic hit, they jumped on this opportunity and did a nationwide rollout to 5,000 technicians um, in 10 days. So they they now went from having no option to provide service. Oh, really, they went from having only audio based phone calls for supporting their customers in their homes to now having a, a vi video based virtual presence solution to service their customers and homes in 10 days nationwide. So I think that shows a couple things. One is the, the recognition that this is a powerful technology that, that can be valuable to their customers, but secondarily, it's extremely easy to adopt and roll out. You know, they were able to train people um, and train their field techs and allow their field techs to start using it um, virtually immediately. So it, it was an incredible uh, time for us and an incredible experience. We have a lot of other customers who've done similar things, including current customers. Uh, just one more story about that. Yeah. Um, a, a number of our customers were, were using Help Lightning for a fixed, relatively small set of use cases. They, would, they said, we know it works well for these 12 use cases. Right. And if, we, if our customers call us uh, with a problem in one of these 12, we're going to use Help Lightning. When the pandemic hit and when they were prevented from traveling, mm. um, they they expanded that use of, uh, that set of use cases substantially. So they added maybe 40 more use cases. So now we're going to use it for these additional cases because we can't be there. So we so now we're going to use these tools uh, where previously we would have sent somebody, but now we're going to use these tools to solve these problems remotely. They found out that it worked well. A lot of that's going to be sticky now um, post post uh, as the travel restrictions are relaxed, many of those will still be done virtually um, in many cases. So we have seen a huge uh, um, um, increase in our adoption, in both from new customers as well as existing customers. From the end of February to the end of April, we saw a 435% increase in usage of Help Lightning by our customers. Wow. So it was, it, you know, we were growing really nicely prior to the pandemic, but then it went up, you know, went up the cliff in terms of value proposition and usage for our customers. Wow. Wow. I, I want you to talk a little bit about if you've seen any um, use cases with people who support customers using contact centers, call centers, right? Because it, it seems like, you know, you have dispatch and those kinds of things. Have you, have you guys seen adoption in that? I've seen, I've spoken with a couple of guests over the last, several months, we're seeing an uptick in video, right? Um, 
given what's happening and they're trying to resolve things. So if I can see what you're seeing, that goes in. Well, forget video. <laughs> it's like, like if you put this thing on there, um, all of a sudden you put a product like uh, uh, Lightning in there. I, I'm starting to wonder if you can make that, whoever that person is in the contact center, engineer or whatever their skill level, you can make them uh, be far more effective and have happier customers if you can somehow figure out the, the technology. Yeah, that's a great question and um, interesting um, uh, topic to discuss. Uh, if we think about how the different channels that we have for call centers of, of communicating with our with uh, uh, with customers, you you have everything from you know um, chat, instant messaging, you know voice based calls, and now as you as you notice, video based calls, and we see the virtual presence as kind of a next generation of video based calls. So now not only can I see what you see, but I can actually interact with you using virtual presence. So we see this as a ne next generation channel for interacting with customers. It is one channel in a multi -chan in a in a multi channel um, communication strategy with your customers, but I think it's an important channel for those complex problems where showing the customer what to do can be very valuable. Not only have we seen it used with service related activities, but even training related activities. Mm, yeah. uh, oftentimes the customer will you know, will call and say, I don't know how to do X, Y, and Z. And if you can actually show them, uh, then they can uh, maybe overcome that training hurdle and um, better use your product better. Now that 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 makes sense. So, um, and again, if you're just joining, I'm I'm in a chat with Gary, who is the CEO of Help Lightning. We've been having a, a conversation about augmented reality, and again, this idea of how do we um, be there when we're not even physically there, and and everything else that, that goes with that. Um, if I'm listening to this and I say, you know what, I'm I'm there. Um, how do I how do I get started? Specifically, I want I want you to touch on, you know, um, where do people tend to nibble? Because you're making this sound um, a lot more accessible than most of my audience believe it is, right? And 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 so, is it as accessible as you as you make it sound? And where do folks usually stop? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the the technology is relatively easy to understand and deploy. It's um, it you can um, most of us today are used to using video-based communications with our you know with our kids or our parents or um, or and even the older generation often are using uh, tools like FaceTime to to chat with their grandkids. And so so because of that, we're all used to this video-based world. So it's relatively straightforward from that perspective. Um, I think that uh, the, um, if you compare this with other types of augmented reality, I, let's, let's distinguish this, this collaborative video-based augmented reality I've been talking about from maybe what most people think of with what I would call a digital augmented reality, right. where you're, you're interacting um, with a digital world that's overlaid on the real world. Right. In that case, the... Um, that is a, that's that is harder to roll out and deploy because you have to actually develop that content. Yep. If I'm going to show somebody how to, you know, change the filter in this piece of equipment, I have to get one of my experts to work um, on this, um, all the steps and the process, and um, to show somebody how to do that, how to replace that filter. Um, and now I've solved by now I've spent you know weeks developing that content, and now I've solved one problem. Well, there may be you know, four or 500 things you can do with this piece of equipment. And I've solved now one of them. And now I have to repeat that for each of the different problems I want to solve from a digital augmented reality perspective. Now contrast that with, with um, the virtual presence technology of Help Lightning. And um, you can actually use your existing experts, your existing process. Um, and and it's a, it's, it's because we're all accustomed to using video these days, it's a natural transition to be able to show somebody how to um, how to use a video-based solution um, to uh, to be able to solve problems. Um, in addition, we're we're all very accustomed to using gestures and tools um, today. If I'm gonna if I want to show you how to um, how to solve a problem in your home, I, I I may type you know I point at something and say 
you know, this is the button you're going to push, or you want to turn this dial, you know, a, qu a quarter of a turn counterclockwise, or or hold this button for three seconds. All those things are very natural types of communications mm -hmm. that we're all very accustomed to doing, and right. that's exactly how um, how Help Lightning works when you're providing expertise for somebody from a thousand miles away. Well, I, I I didn't I didn't I didn't think about that right in that in some ways this is frankly a lower bar from an adoption perspective because it doesn't really require you to to do all of these gyrations to replicate something in the physical or in the digital world. It's just it's just you doing that thing and then you can bring that reality to to a remote location. Wow. Now that's that that's awesome. So um Gary, where can folks reach you? I know you are on Twitter, LinkedIn where do you where do you live digitally? <laughs> right, right. Well, I do have a tw Twitter account, uh, Gary York Tech. Uh, f feel free to connect with me there. Uh, I uh, I try to follow what's going on in the aug augmented reality world um, and in the field service space. So those are kind of the topics I tend to uh, focus on. I'm also on um, on LinkedIn. You can find me. Um, uh, if, as a CEO of Help Lightning, uh, of course, the Help Lightning website, happy to have you connect through there, too. So those are great ways to connect with me. And um, I'd love to hear feedback from, uh, you know, we're always learning yeah. from about new use cases in, in these markets. And I'd love to hear from um, you or your listeners if they have ideas about how um, this technology may be valuable in their space. Perfect. Hey, Gary, I, I want to thank you for coming on the show. We'll, we'll post the show. We'll have Gary's contact information there for you guys to reach out to him. As always, um, shoot me questions, criticisms, uh, what you want to hear next, uh, questions I forgot to ask. I, uh, I love the audience and, and looking forward to reacting to this. And, and Gary, if they come my way, I'll send them your way as well. And thank you so very much for uh, spending your Friday afternoon with us. We will love to have you back uh, soon. Thanks, Gary. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. And until next time, remember, the experience is either random or intentionally curated. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to The Curated Experience with Amas Tanuma. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll join the conversation online by visiting us at curatedcx.com or at amastanuma.com. That's C-U-R-A-T-E-D-C-X.com or A-M-A-S-T-E-N-U-M-A-H.com. And please invite your friends and colleagues to visit our website or iTunes where they can check this and previous podcasts. This has been a Bian LLC production. Check us next time for another edition of The Curated Experience.